That's bits of your life, isn't it? So, as the way I see it, is those bits of your life need to, you need to look at it and think, did I enjoy it? And if the answer is yes, bingo. It just doesn't fucking matter what it was. You enjoyed it, marvelous. Then you're working in the right thing. And when you stop enjoying it, it's kind of your responsibility to have a look at it and think, God, could I, could I do something else instead? And not, <laughs> God, not all. You can't always, but sometimes you can. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Birmingham Food Podcast, presented by two food-obsessed brothers from another mother, Liam and Carl. I'm Liam. I'm Carl. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> you know what, hello, hello is brilliant. Been watching it recently. Still for that shit's funny, man. <laughs> is that what the moustache is about? It's like, gentlemanly like. You know hello. what, I am growing a moustache at the moment. I can't really, you know what, I just left it on one day and I was like, oh, I like that. Oh, I love it. I gotta tell you that I love it. it I've, I've purposely saved it. We've sat here for an hour chatting, but I've saved it till we started recording to say how much I love it. I think I have a face that warrants a mustache. You look very like Mexican in a stereotypical way. Oh, great! Mm. So I just need to. I feel like I'm watching now. Narcos or Ozark. Or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I just figured if I'm losing the hair on my head, I might as well try and grow a little bit on my face somewhere. Awesome, mate. We need to stop because this episode is ridiculously long. You know, it's long, but my mouth hurt after this one. Like, just my cheeks were, like, burning. We had that much fun and laughed that much. Mate, I've been editing this podcast at five o'clock in the morning during the week, and I'm trying not to wake people up because I'm laughing. I'm yeah. really laughing. Like, it's so good. This is more like a comedy episode <laughs> no, no it, it's just it, that fun eh? it definitely is there's a lot of comedy because um zoe this is with zoe punks and chances uh, everyone knows them yes bab yeah, yeah if you don't know them yeah. then you, i don't know why you listen to us yeah 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 they're a brand that we love she's somebody that we absolutely love so we just thought you know we wanted to get her on and Obviously, this is a food podcast, but we thought, sod it. Let's drink as well, and she does a load yeah. of collabs yeah, with Attic. Yeah. And we were like, let's just get her on, and we'll places. just talk about food and drink, and it will definitely count, and it does count. But on top of that, it's kind of like a podcast of two, two sides, so not only will you enjoy it for the laughter, and obviously, um, Zoe's personality really shines through, but there's a lot of business advice in there as well, man. Yeah, especially branding and stuff like this and how to go about stuff. It's so hard, like to be authentic at the minute and punks and chances is so authentic so punk so brilliant she's got a tribe you can really learn something from this episode really you can laugh and learn yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was just laughing i was drinking the whole time so <laughs> we were just getting the beers in yeah record drinking. it at the plow yeah obviously. thanks big thanks to the plow for letting us record there yeah upstairs that was cool and then we had wicked pizza afterwards you had pizza yeah concern. i had vegan pizza it was good man I was seriously impressed. I mean, I'd heard a lot of people talking about how good the players' pizzas were, and I was happy to get get stuck in. And you had the calzone. Calzone, yeah, it was delicious. It was really good. Yeah, so this is obviously a short episode. Obviously... A short intro, long episode. <laughs> yeah, short, short intro. If you like all the rambling about me and Carl, where we've been eating, who we've been chatting to, what we've been up to, new openings and all of that, Sorry to disappoint you, but not this week. But if you are missing that, you can go and sign up for our newsletter. The link will be in this episode show notes. So go ahead and go and sign up to Breaking Bread Bite Size. Massive thank you to everyone who's already signed up for that. And we're getting them emails out twice a week. So the Monday after the Monday podcast, if that makes sense, the in betweener, you get a, basically an intro to bi weekly. Who our guest is bi weekly. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Intro to who the guest is and all the new openings, pop-ups, events. We try and get them all in there and then we try and do a little feature about where we've eaten nice. Go and subscribe to that if you want to see all that piece. Join our tribe. Yeah, <laughs> see, yeah. I'm learning from Zoe. See? <laughs> Join our community. As always, thanks for listening. If you love it, please share it. Uh, it means the world to us. We'll love you forever. And massive thank you to Zoe for coming on. Peace. Awesome episode. Zoe, pumps and chances. Mm.
It's a typical podcast fashion we've started. We just acted all normal. <laughs> Zoe, completely normal. So we have punks and chances, fam. How are you? I'm very good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, awesome, awesome. Like, obviously, this is a bit different. We normally have chefs, bar managers, restaurant people, but sometimes we do have guests on just because one, we think they're cool, and two, we can just talk about food, and it kind of counts. That, that totally counts. <laughs> that, I'm, yeah, I'm here that for counts. that. <laughs> I refuse to believe we have a listener in Birmingham that won't want to hear this one. Yeah, I, 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 I don't buy it. Like, they've got to want to hear this. Okay. I'd want to hear it, and I'm here, and I've been excited about doing it. Yeah, if not, we have <laughs> so been trying to sort it for what, like a year or something. Oh, no, now? I'm really glad. <laughs> I'm so revenge. But to be fair, a Christmas is, you know, yeah, mental. Like then I mean, I've been COVID-ed. COVID-ed. Yeah. Like, I'm You've had it COVID twice now, haven't you? Twice. <laughs> which is appalling. One of it smells really poorly, and then the second time I wasn't really. But and then between that, my husband died at my kids, so that excuses me for about three months. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> So it's only nine months for a It's only nine months. <laughs> <laughs> I feel a bit left back because I never had it like. Oh, mate. You might have. You just don't know yeah, about don't it. Know. Some yeah, people maybe. didn't have a reaction, did they? Maybe. I was testing fairly regularly. My daughter had it, and if we hadn't tested her, we never would have guessed she had it because there was nothing wrong with her. No. Not a thing. Mm. There's no I way you would I suppose that's known. the way you want it. Mm. Yeah, I was really bad when I had it. I was quite ill for a couple of days. How are you? Were when you I first had it, yeah. I was really ill. It was in the busiest time of year. It was the last week in November, and I would go to bed uh, just feeling fucking terrible. And I'd set my alarm for three hours later, and I'd get out of bed and do like an hour and a half, two hours of work, and then I'd go back into bed <laughs> and then sleep for a bit. And then I'd get up and do a couple of hours of work, and then I'd go back to, and we'd just repeat that cycle. Wow. It was quite grim, yeah. yeah There's a lot of time in that bed. It wasn't good time. It was it was a poor time, yeah. But I got you know got past it. It's Christmas, isn't it? So it was a busy time. Yeah. And that's one of the things about kind of if you run through something by yourself. Um, <laughs> it's on you. Take <laughs> a shit if you're sick today. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like there's no one to phone in. Uh, so, yeah, we got on with it. It was all right. I still had, we still had a good Christmas and I got all the orders out and everything. But it was just there was a week that was um, pretty dire. Yeah. yeah. And I imagine Christmas, your busiest time of year, isn't it? It was massively busy. Yeah, it was mental. It was brilliant. Like I loved it. It was a really fun, and I, was, I had to cancel a couple of events because because of COVID. Um, but I still managed to do quite a few events, and that was lovely, especially on the back of last year when there was naff all events really. Mm. Although the few they did have were really good. So even like last year, Attic did like an outdoor market, and it was fucking brilliant. Everyone just sort of shuffled around and had a few beers, and it was all you know outside and set. It's freezing, but it was ace. And they shuffled <laughs> around a little square. Did you always come to that one? No, no, I've been to that one. No, it was good. Um, I shuffled around it, and then people just sort of walked past and sort of they were like one of them, one of them, <laughs> and then they sort of walked around. Um, and then it meant that this year they're really expanding all their markets. So they did a Christmas one again, and it was brilliant. And um, then they've just done a big January one, which was lovely as well. Um, they're going to do some spring ones. It's a wicked place to do events. Yeah, it's I great. I've been there for place. drinks. It's, it's a really good... It's so good. It's such a good spot. It is one of my favourite places run by some of my favourite people. I just think they are brilliant from the top all the way down. Yeah. The staff are lovely. Like, the ethos of the company is lovely. They're just... I think they're just ace people doing ace things. And mm. the beer goes from fucking strength to strength. It's just... You never have an acid beer and you're like... Mm. Yeah, you're I've like, never had a bad one. Never! No, it doesn't happen. You just happen. have one and you're like... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> But it's testament that everywhere's got intuition on tap. That, it's well, everywhere good has got it on tap. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's just, that to me, that's sort of the main beer of Birmingham now. If someone came to Birmingham, what's the beer you're going to find in all the pubs that's it's local? It, that's the only one I can see in every single pub. But it doesn't feel like a compromise, does it? Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's got such massive, it's got such broad appeal. And often then things that have broad appeal sort of get a bit diluted do you know what I mean to appeal to as many people as possible yeah. it doesn't feel like that at all it just feels flavorful and light and it hits my spot because it's about it's a four percenter isn't it yeah it's not too bad yeah i'm i'm a bit i don't go for the dippers or the <laughs> double dip, i don't i try to the stick seven eight percent ones i can't do it even for a little drink i, I tend not to go for them mm. me and dave both were just like oh no we're not like under the fives <laughs> with a table beer appreciation society anything when you see it when i say a table beer on 
like a three percenter. I mean, that oh, it really gets me going. Well, their one's really good. Their table was it denim or something like that? Um, it, was called. it was a blue can. With it was. Denim it was. On it, it was. I think God, it was more good. Than one. That was really good. That was a three percenter. We first got into one with Cloudwater. I don't know if it was at Birmingham, but um, they did a wicked one. It was like, I don't know, 2.8, 2.9. And it was, I can't remember what it's called now, but they, were t- they did two versions. One was like a 2.93 and one was like a 3.5. And the lower ABV was... Something superior. about a table beer. It's just... So good. It's a very, very good beer. Like, mm-hmm. presumably you have the Colonel's one. Moorish. It's so good. Yeah, yeah. Probably well, one of my favourite ever Peg beers. Peg does that one all the time. Ever? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh. One of my local. Then again, I love all their beers. I just love beer. Well, yeah. <laughs> I think that's the, Beer's the, great. The moral of the story is <laughs> I love beer. And I'm with you. <laughs> You've done, you done a collab beer with Attic? I did. I've done one with Brum Brewery and one with Attic. Oh, yeah. And I, I loved both of them. So Brum Brewery was first and we did a table beer. Yeah, that was table beer. And I that was literally... It was, that. Yeah, and it was a whopping can. It was a really yeah, fun... Yeah, it was a uh, huge. <laughs> yeah, it was like a really, really fun thing. And like people have since used them. Uh, somebody sent a picture... Uh, and they'd use it in their wedding for like the flowers. Someone right. else had made some candles with the can, like loads of things like that, which I just thought was ace. I loved that. It was, but we, we didn't make enough of it. It went like, it just went like flipping. I think the fir- it sold out in like two hours or something. The first drop, and then the next drop sold out in twelve hours. Yeah, we I think just I didn't have enough of it. I ended up getting some. I was very, very happy. Yeah, <laughs> it was really I good. Drank loads it was one of them. I didn't want to drink it because I knew how hard it was to get. Yeah, so I'd have a can. I'd be like. I, know. I don't want to drink this can now. When I was on the last can, I was just like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so we, at Christmas, we do the beer table of joy, which is an outside circular table in our garden. And it's just, we just buy loads of different uh, British cool beers um, that we like the can. We like the look of it. We've read good reviews of it. Just all different and, not, and lots and lots of local ones. And so we have the table of joy and those little ones stood proud of all the others because they were so big. <laughs> and we had like, we had like that, that Christmas, we had quite a lot of people pop over into the garden. Is that right? Before you pre- I forget when we went into lockdown, but there was a bit of a time where you could have people in your garden, but not your house. And it was just lovely. It was just a really cool vibe. And then this year we tried to recreate it. Um, and it wasn't quite the same because Dave got COVID so we couldn't see anybody. Oh, <laughs> so it looked a little bit sad. <laughs> and our kitchen was like, shit. And I was like, oh no, this is this is a bit of a duffy year. We'll come back to it next year. But then, yeah, so after Brum Brewery, then we did the um, Punks in the Attic with, with Attic. And that was ace. It was just really, really fun. I love Attic Brewery. You, just, you can go to them with an idea. And I feel like we're kindred spirits in the way. They look at you in the eye and they go, you can see me in, does that sound fun? Yeah, fuck it, oh, that sounds fun. Yeah, yeah, let's <laughs> yeah, do that, let's do that. And I love that, I love that, yeah. Uh, how much input did you have onto the beer? Did you get to taste and say, no, nah, they're like that, try this? Or? With with Brum Ruri, a lot, I went to brew it. Mm. And um, uh, Matt, who's now gone to... Oh, flip, I've forgotten where he is. He's just gone to a brewery in Liverpool. So he was head brewer at the time. Um, and we had a really, really fun day doing that. And that was ace. And we did a lot of tasting. That I, d- I really enjoyed that. Attic, we did a little bit, not quite as much because our timeline was so um, tight. Yeah. So we were much more involved with like the design of the can and the sort of the product element of it. We were less involved with the recipe because um, time, kind of time constraints, really. Um, but we still did a fair bit. And it was, it was just very, very fun. I love doing a beer. I love any co like, You know, like... <laughs> It was just really fun. It's just, you know, you, you get to see your artwork and your little mm. beer. It's just, it's a good vibe. I like it. Mm. Do you have to turn many collabs away? Like, like, yeah. Yeah. There's I could imagine of, people mm. be like, they see pound signs, like quick pound signs, and think I'm going to try and jump on that. And you're just like, nah, that, that's It's a bit strange, actually, because even got some people, th- lots of things come out and you know instinctively it's wrong and... Your two brands don't really align anyway. And you just ask, oh, no problem. But there's some things come along where you might like the people or the thing, but it's still wrong. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And that's just sort of like a little bit more difficult. But if I collab with everyone who wanted to do a collab, <laughs> I'd literally have no time to do anything else. Like, I already have no time. <laughs> I don't have enough time to do all the things I want to do. So if I did all the other stuff sort of out of politeness, I'd be, I'd be scuppered, really. Mm. So we kind of skipped way ahead, but how did you get started? Because we love 
the brand, the clothes. Oh yeah, I've got Bang. one, Everything. two, I've got about five t-shirts. Yeah? I've got the it's woolly like bag. The fact you guys have got it on your little, um, yeah, what, do you put it on the, do you put it on the yeah, avatar? Yeah, yeah, avatar. Yeah, the picture. Yeah. Yeah, well, no, yeah. Think, yeah, it's yeah. like our Pictures unofficial so uniform. Yeah, it's our unofficial uniform, though, isn't it? Breaking bread uniform. Well, it's you half my it. wardrobe, so I can't really not. <laughs> no, but once you've started, people get addicted because it's so comfy, isn't it? Yeah, they are really Cold nice. organic cotton, what are you going to do? Yeah, it's great. <laughs> but you know, like one of you wears the Yes Bob one, you said, I can't think which one, which one. Which I don't know. One? You yeah, have no. Yes. It's not true to your characters. Are you more knowing you're more yes? No, he got bought it. Did he bought it for Christmas? Off my hair. Yeah, I, got, I think I got bought it, but yeah. I think if anything, we're opposite, really. I feel like you're a bit more negative. I'm one of them, I'm instantly negative yeah, until yeah, I yeah. think about it and then go, oh, no, actually, that's a good idea. Oh, my God, I'm you exactly the opposite. You have to talk around a little bit. <laughs> so I'm like, if someone says, like, do you want to do something? I'm like, good, yes, good, let's do it. <laughs> and then I'll go away and think about it and think, oh, shit, what's that? I don't yeah, that's, that's my wife. Idea, Since actually. everything's, yeah, we'll do that. And then I'm like, we can't afford to do that. <laughs> it's like, oh, no, we can't do that. No. <laughs> But no, you're quite pos- instantly positive. Yeah, it's I'm instantly positive. But I'm yeah. cautiously. Cautiously <laughs> positive, okay. Yeah. Hence why we have a podcast, even though none of us had any idea how to start a podcast. Or yeah, we were, I was very positive about that. <laughs> I was like, yeah, talk about food. You were places, really drunk though when I came to you about it. You were like, you, yeah, you were really, really drunk. And you, you were like, yeah, time to let's ask do me. it. It's a perfect time. <laughs> Best time to ask me. It's a perfect time to ask people. They're feeling loose, yeah, cold. cheerful. <laughs> How many have you had? Uh, six. Uh, have another. Can, can we have a dog? <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> have you got a dog? Yeah, how you got they gonna, didn't. That's not how we got dog. it, but we do have a dog. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, how did you get started? So peas and seeds is like uh, it'll be four this summer, so it's three and a half. Mm. But four years ago, on New Year's Eve, we were sat around on a hotel floor, um, and I'd been so I don't know how far to go back really. But like um, prior to that, I had a business before this doing, um, I designed and made lighting. So sort of um, almost like a contemporary take on Victorian shades. And I turned to the wooden bases, but I had those turned to my designs and rewired those. And um, I'd make these really intricate hand-stitched shades to sit with these lamps. And then I sold them to interior designers and I had a website and I sold them to the end user. And I really loved it. And it was great actually. And it was going really well and I, it was sort of going so well that I'd, I'd got a bit more known within certain interior designers and I was getting lots and lots of interior design work but it's, it's, I'm just shit at being told what to do like I'm bad at it and interior design contract work is sort of like we're doing this room and we will pay you very well to make this thing exactly to my specification. But that doesn't work for me because <laughs> what that means is you're telling me what to do and therein lies the problem. And so I ended up doing this work. So I did some work for a yacht. Um, wow. Like I stitched some shades for this yacht. I did some like pretty sort of significant projects for interior. I mean, God, if you've got an interior designer, do you know what I mean? The project it's already, yeah, you've you're already in a sort of funny little league, aren't you? Away, like, yeah. where are you? Um, so I did some projects in London and it, it to me, it became a lot less creative because someone was kind of specifying something and and I, I did, I, that just wasn't really my vibe. Anyway, it made me sort of think about it. I think actually, I don't want to do that. And I've kind of got form with this. I'll do something for quite a long time. And then quite, just sort of, not <laughs> overnight. <clears throat> that's not accurate. But there'll just be a point and I'll say, yeah, I just don't want to do that. I just, I kind of think I need to do something else. I don't want to do that. So I did do it. And I had like, um, I had um, collaborations with anthropology and they were in their London stores. I had collaborations with peddlers, and they were in Selfridges in Birmingham. Oh. I had collabs um, with Toast. I don't know if, if some people might know. Um, <laughs> and a sort of like a middle class sort of uh, nice fabric type thing. I had collaborations with those. So everything was going well, but it's just sort of, I just can't do, once I've fallen out of love with something, I can't do it. I just yeah. cannot do it. It's Your life's too short. You know, you need to, you, you know, when you work, that's bits of your life, isn't it? So... It's the way I see it is those bits of your life need to, you need to look at it and think, did I enjoy it? And if the answer is yes, bingo. It just doesn't fucking matter what it was. You enjoyed it, marvellous. Then you're working in the right thing. And when you stop enjoying it, it's kind of your responsibility to have a look at it and think, God, could I, 
can I do something else instead? And not, <laughs> God, not all, you can't always, but sometimes you can. Do you know what I mean? And so I did that, and then I kind of thought, Nyah. and I was still working on some big projects with it, but I was always in the back of my mind thinking, I need, I need to do something different. Prior to that, I was a fashion buyer, and so I knew a lot about fabrics and stuff. That's a dog shit job. If, uh, yeah, if you know anyone who's thinking about doing that or thing, you might say, oh, that sounds a fun job. That's not a fun job. There's nothing really <laughs> fun about that job. It's a shit job. Um, Is that working for someone or? So yes, yeah, so what I worked yeah. for, yeah, I worked for like a blue chip high street company yeah. buying jersey wear, which actually, which is why it came in handy, you see? I bought mm. jersey wear and knitwear. Um, so I've got loads of technical knowledge about those fabrics, which is actually incredibly helpful now. Yeah. I still wouldn't have done it. I think I could have learned that without doing all of that. But anyway, <laughs> um, so, so I had that background and then the lamp making sort of design background. And I wanted to do something that pulled on, you've got to work with all your skills, right? Yeah. But also with the fact that I can't be told what to do. <laughs> so getting a job wasn't an option. Like I had not been employed since I was 25. And I was like, well, that's not going to work. I can't, if someone says to me, can you just do my, even now, my is like, I can, but why can't you? It's <laughs> like, I don't know why you're asking me because the thing you're asking me, you could do it. It was kind of thinking of something that I wanted to do that was fun and something that used all my skills and that I was going to enjoy doing, but also obviously that I could make enough money to live on <laughs> to do, which obviously you need to do that too. And I was going to do a kids wear brand. So I've always done loads of stitching, like the handmade lamps were a stitchy thing. Obviously I've got my background in um, knowing a lot about clothing and fashion and, and kind of the business side of that and fabrics primarily. And I was going to do... I was going to hand make kids' clothes. And as a sideline, to go with the handmade stuff I was stitching, I was going to print these T-shirts. And I just had this idea that I, the whole thing was going to be... I've got, a hu- I've got huge amounts of fabric at home because I'm like a dirty hoarder with it. I can't stop. I live, I live fabric. Um, and I was going to use this fabric to make this stuff. I'm already, I'm already used to using the sewing machine all the time and hand stitch and stuff. And I like that's sort of like a swizz really to me. And I, and I enjoy doing it. Make it for my kids. Make it, so you start off by making something you want and then you realise you've got 30 of them and you can't keep them, so you've got to sell them <laughs> or you've got to stop. Um, make it for my kids. But then I thought, to sort of cool it up, little uh, printed tees and stuff and sort of make it like a sort of kids brand where the two things, you almost like buy the two things together. And so I made a few things for my kids and then I printed these t-shirts for kids and I loved them and I started looking at more colours and thought I was getting really excited about it, that element of it. I got it all sorted, like, and I got all the branding together. And I thought, actually, this is actually really good. I'm going to do it for adults too. I'm just going to do like a, a t-shirt for adults, see how it goes. And so I did an adults tea too. And then the adult stuff just took off, <laughs> like way more than the kids stuff. And obviously, I never sat down and sewed shit on my sewing machine. <laughs> that never <laughs> happened. <laughs> it was all part of my plan. But I made my children three dresses, and they called it a day. But like one of the sort of things that was kind of instrumental is, is Head, she's now got a lovely new shop in Sturchley. It's beautiful. Mm. Um, and that's like a sort of third incarnation. So she's in Sturchley now. She was in the Great Western Arcade, which was also beautiful. But Great Western Arcade is difficult. It's like, it's, it's notoriously place, difficult. Yeah. And then the rents are high. Um, it's kind of a thorough, I think it's easier for food and drink, but for, for retail, it's tough. Um, so they had a lovely shop there. But like, I think possibly like the sort of... Um, the pandemic sort of was the final, like, when yeah. like people stopped going to town, do you know what I mean? And Price actually shopped in, in, in Harborn, and I went to show her the stuff, and she was just like, I fucking love it. We need to do it. Like, I want to buy a sim for the shop. And that sort of gave me quite a lot of confidence, really, because Rachel of the Hedge has just the best taste. She's just, she's she's killer. She's really, really ace. Um, and so she put it in the shop, and all of the adult stuff was sort of requested a lot more than the kids stuff so I still do kids stuff but primarily it's adults what did those originals look like were they the, just a yes bab or yes bab brim punk I mean it was the white the white classic yes bab that's mm. still knocking around now yeah like that was it and um, it was a slightly different um, it started off in a slightly lighter weight organic cotton and I increased the weight of it on the feedback that um, uh, mostly from my husband um, that men like a heavier weight t-shirt basically if, you, if you've got a really lightweight t-shirt it's a bit for women, it's quite nice, actually, because it can be quite drapey. But I've always been about it being completely gender neutral. So yeah. it's no good to me, even if I definitely have more female customers than male. But I still have a significant amount of male customers. It's no good to me doing something that they can't wear. It's like, I'll do the odd thing, like a crop sweat, do you know what I mean? 
Yeah. Although it definitely goes <laughs> yeah, by that well, too. Pull that off, I'm sure. <laughs> and then, like, those who will buy the crop, um, the massive um, fluoro rainbow one, like, a lot of guys bought that for pride in the crop and looked fabulous in it. I'm sure. <laughs> Why yes, babe? Because I chose Birmingham. So yeah. I remember reading about, like, when Tom, um, Tom Cullen came to Birmingham yeah. from London. Yeah, yeah. And I thought that was just fucking brilliant. Like, um, when I came to Birmingham, which was only like uh, 14 years, I'm not a Brummie, you can probably hear that, just mean. But we chose Birmingham too. And so Mm. when I saw him start this, uh, it's not a blog, is it? What what is it? A writing, a like in. a newsletter, but. is what do you call it? I don't it? feel like it's a newsletter, but it doesn't feel like that gives it justice. No, it's not. It's no, I don't know what to call it. Like, like, but it's like, it's like a, I don't want to say lifestyle. I, I would call no, it I like know what to uh, call it, but it's Birmingham writing, Bible, it's really isn't it? Like yeah. it's, it's pretty fucking important to be honest. Yeah, like, it I is. read it religiously. Like and, and the writing's funny. It's witty. It's like and it's really informative. And he was it's all good stuff. And I remember signing up to that and looking at what's in, and I just thought that's fucking great. Like, it was at a time Birmingham wasn't as good when we as it is now. Mm. Um, like that's just factual, I think. I think like, Birmingham... Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah we've brought this up a few Not times. Car, car's, all, I've loved, car's always, I've always said... I've loved Birmingham. I've absolute lived absolute it. I mean, passion. I chose to live no, here. No, I mean, like, 15, 20 years ago, car was saying, <laughs> best <laughs> city in the world. It is. You know? No, it's the people it haven't changed. <laughs> no, the people haven't. I the think the same. The people are the same people. But there was definitely... At the time when we moved here, Indies... It was nothing like it is now. In, no. Across the board, I mean, uh, uh, retail, brands, restaurants, but all of that, it, now it feels so exciting. There's so much of it. Mm. And it's and it feels like there's so much bloody support for it. Do you know what I mean? And I don't think it felt like that, say, 10 years ago. Do you know no. what I mean? Or I like in, if I'm honest, even five years ago. Yeah. Independent Birmingham probably had a big thing to do with that as well. I know the... Yeah, um, yeah huge. absolutely. And, yeah. No, it's with Birmingham. It's the areas. There's loads different... It's not just yeah. the city centre and then there's fuck all. There's the city centre... You can you can have a great time in Birmingham and completely ignore the whole of the city centre <laughs> if you want to. You've got so many different... Harborn, Harborn, Mosley, mm-hmm. Kings E. I mean, they're all grouped together in the same area. <laughs> sort of. It still takes Not me 20 minutes off. in a couch. Can see. <laughs> yeah. But it's such a... All the little districts, and they've all got their own thing. Like, we're in Harbour now. Like, this is the pr- pretty much the furthest away in Birmingham we can come to somewhere we actually want to go to, isn't it? That's got No offence to, to everybody in Sutton Coalfield, like, I'm sure. No, I'm not bothered. <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing in Sutton Coffee. Yeah, balls to We're, de- we're going to be cancelled. <laughs> we're going to be cancelled in Sutton Coffee. <laughs> but like, we ever see a new opening, we're like, Harborn, oh, for fuck's sake, why Harborn again? What I was say, so when we were first moving to Birmingham, and you know, like when you don't know the area as well, and you get like advice from people, you say, oh, look, where, where do you think we should, because you don't know when you go to a city, do you know what I mean? Especially if you don't have friends living here, you don't know where to go and look. You can't say, I want to live in Birmingham and do you know what I mean it's huge yeah. and so I was like, oh, where you want to be you want to go look at four oaks and i was like okay four oaks you write it down do you know what I mean with your other suggestions and i remember driving there and i was like you're fucking kidding me fuck <laughs> off i'm not living here i was fucking mental yeah oh, this isn't a real place even this, to anyone even in this was like an area so like, this used to <laughs> just be known for a pub crawl yeah, because it mm. used to have just pubs the Harbour the Mall, way, wasn't it? Yeah, the just Mall. pubs the whole way up. I don't think any back then was particularly amazing. Like I'm going back a long time now. When did the plough come? Because the plough have always been here for me. <laughs> it's like for Man, how long have you lived here now? Fourteen years, you say? In Birmingham, fourteen, four, yeah, fourteen. Where did I come? Twenty six, Um, yeah, yeah, fourteen years. So I'd have been coming out here <laughs> at least twenty, twenty one years ago. It's been here as long as I can remember. It's probably always but been here. Yeah. It's the thing about the plough, isn't it? Is yeah. they're constantly. That's why it's so brilliant. They never stop. Well, it's so different to the last time tinkering. I was here. Like they pop in, and unreal. you think you already think it's amazing. You're like, nothing can be done to this. Mm. It's it's fabulous. Nothing can be helped. And then you come back, and you're like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> they changed the lighting, yeah. and they improved the toilets and the the gardens. Pit. And you're like, now it's perfect. Nothing can change. Then you're like, ah. They've done that little seating. Did you see the seating thing? And the and the heating in the back. And every time you come, it's something. And they never stop. They're never, ever resting the laurels. They're just constantly tweaking. We've we done a podcast with uh, Melanie Spencer from Spencer Swindon. And the, they're doing all the interior for here. Ah. And she was like, I was like, who do you work for? She was like, we do a lot of work for the plough. And I was like, 
oh, recently. She goes, always, always. just always. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember we were doing our um, nine dozen, and I was like, I don't know, bloody, I love those lights. They were like some little brass pendants. I was like, where, where are they from? Like, is it is it something that you can buy as a regular person in retail, or is it like a sort of? And he said, like, no, no, you can buy me. He gave me the brand, and he was just like, D- look at them. But like, don't be offended by the price. I looked at them and they were just like fucking 400 pounds each or something insane. <laughs> it's just like, he just, he likes what he likes. Did mean, and then it's, yeah. I think it's done. But it's like we were saying with Pip in the, uh, one of our episodes, it's got like a little family tree from the plow of like, people have gone off from the plow and done yeah. amazing things. Like, you know, like Simpsons has and... Yeah, yeah. Um, can church, eat and, um, um, yeah, church. Yeah, church. Yeah. yeah. They've all got their cool, and it, this is like, an integral part to independent Birmingham is the plough, isn't it? Yeah. We should mention we're doing this podcast in the plough. We're in the plough. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're in, in the plough. What are my locals? Be very upstairs. kind to let us use this room. Yeah. So you said you chose you chose Birmingham. Yeah. But two questions. Where did you come from? Where, did, where were you before that? So your, I, your, accent, your accent's like a mix. Yeah, it's a really weird hybrid. Yeah. It's, probably, it's probably flattened out a little bit since living in Brougham. Um, but I'm a bit of a magpie with accents. Like, I've always been that way. Yeah. Um, I grew up in Telford, which is like 35-odd. I think most people in Birmingham will know Telford, but where, yeah, yeah, where I went, I went to study in Leeds, yeah. and no one knew that, so I ended up just in Shropshire because they knew the county <laughs> like that it was in, and lived there until I was 18, 17 or 18. I did an art foundation course, and so usually do that at home. But me and my mum had kind of realised that we probably couldn't live together any longer. <laughs> and so um, I went to Leeds to do my art foundation and then went on to do a fine art degree there as well. So I was there for four years. And then Dave, my other half, uh, lived in Manchester. So we kind of, I nearly failed my A-levels because of Dave in Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I mean, tell like a 16, 17 year old, like, why don't you stay home and study? Or you could go and visit your boyfriend <laughs> in Manchester. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so so we lived in Manchester and Leeds. We kind of split our time between there. And then I got um, a job um, in Leicester. So I lived in Leicester for quite a long time. And then I moved to Northamptonshire. So mm. various places, but always north and slightly east. <laughs> but like Birmingham is like my most southern point, actually. Um, <laughs> anything below... I'm anything not going below, any more down no, than no, Birmingham. No, no, We're not going, we're not <laughs> going, going south. fucking <laughs> London. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you know what? So because of my degree... And like most creative jobs, I don't know if it's the same now. It's, it's kind of a different time, isn't it? But um, I imagine it's still pretty similar. Most creative jobs are down in London, and you, you need to go there, especially like when you're fresh out. You need to go where the fucking work is. Yeah. And so all my mates from uni who studied graphic design or fan art all ended up down in London, and I always used to go down there. Um, and now, and we used to like, we used to go there, and then and and they kind of thought they were kind of the bee's knees in a way for living in London, yeah. and in a way they were, and we had a great time there. But now they've all moved, moved out to the suburbs and the coast. Who's living in the city with the good <laughs> shit? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we go there in the summer to visit our mates. We go to the summer where they live near the beach, and they tend to come here in the winter where we've got loads of cool shit, and um, you know, you can get a decent drink mixed. Yeah. So why did you choose Birmingham? God, that was a long-winded way to get around that, wasn't it? <laughs> Why did we choose Birmingham? Because um, I've always had an affinity with Birmingham. So when we lived in Telford like as kids, I'd get the train to Birmingham. So like, mm. I like, I was skint. Like our family was skint, and if you grow up skint, being skint gets really fucking old really fucking quickly. Mm. And so I was like a good student, but like I got a lot of jobs. I was just like, I, I need my own fucking beans. Mm-hmm. Not to get stiff, although like I did do three phases, I was kind of wanting stiff when you're like 15, 16, 17, but like to get freedom really, to get choices to do stuff. Do you know what I mean? And so I would work my hairdressing job, which I worked Friday night after A-levels and then, because no one wants to do the Friday night shift. So I did the four till seven Friday night shift, which was fucking awesome because then I went straight to the pub. Yeah. After, I knew everyone in the pub. <laughs> it was just the best. And so this day, I still don't get people who, when you meet them, they're like, oh, shall I meet you outside? It's like, no, no, we're, we're going to the pub. So just, I'll meet you at the bar. <laughs> yeah. But I don't get it. Um, yeah, so you'd go straight there. And then I worked the Saturday all day in the hairdressers because you could get a Saturday day job when you were 14 in the hairdressers. And then I worked Sunday mornings, nine till one in the sandwich making factory because the money was fucking great. <laughs> like you got like 20 quid for like three hours or something. 
and you could go and bat it. Um, and I also worked two or three nights at the vegetarian restaurant because those guys were wankers and I could steal the tips. Right, I would never <laughs> steal tips if tips were going to everybody, but the management used to take all the tips, and I've got a big problem with this. They would take all the tips and like then just put them to the running of the restaurant, but they weren't working that night. So it's like... No, if all the tips are being shared with everyone working, that was, that's how it should be. I yeah. was like, if you're going to keep them all, I am going to put them in my bra and in my shoes. <laughs> yeah. So I was doing all right for myself. And so with this sort of part of, you imagine my amazing I need time really, isn't it? but when I did have a day off from studying and working, I would get the train to Birmingham and we'd go to clubs and we'd go to the rag market and I'd buy all my 70s flares and I'd buy like my strokes leather jackets and I'd, <laughs> Birmingham felt like home. Like, I could go there by myself with my freedom and do what I wanted to do, really. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And so I think I always felt, uh, yeah, very, very attached to it. Like, it's it's got lots and lots and lots of good memories. Like, from a a really, really young kid. Mm. And I'd go, like, at school, like, you'd take trips there. And I used to go see Icon Gallery when the Icon Gallery was down on Bright Street. Mm. And it just, for me, it just had so much stuff. And like Red or Dead, like, that, oh God, I started getting to fashion and like it had that shop there. And I remember going in and they were just fucking great. They just, it was like, everything felt quite sort of like a bit, in, a, in that, you know, you're a teenager, so you're like kind of self-conscious and stuff. Like even like the most confident people are quite self-conscious as a teenager because you're a fucking teenager. Yeah, you don't it's know fuck all. You yet. know shit at all. <laughs> but I remember going into Red or Dead and this guy who was working there and he was just like, Babe, you look fucking great. And I was like, I'm going to take that. (laughs) I'm running with it. Yeah, and and it just felt like, it it felt good. Like, being in Birmingham felt really good. She used to pop into the Oasis Market. Damn straight. I was there all the time. I used to love the Oasis Market. It was so good. (laughs) That's where you would have found us. Yeah, Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. looking at Slipknot (laughs) t-shirts. It just made you just shunt around, couldn't you? And then the chat would just be about what baguette you were going to get on the corner after. And then uh, it was just... And there was a shoe shop near there as well that did like um, mm. like sort of discount trainers, but they were good, but they were sort of end of line. Because all that thing yeah, was, all the whole that. thing it was, was yeah, do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah there's just on the outside bit. Um, Quite virgin yeah. on the ramp, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Fuck yeah. 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 yeah so that's, that's how I come Birmingham. So even though we moved around and lived in some different places, um, it's got a very, very soft spot for Birmingham. Yeah. Is that why you've gone... Because all your stuff, it tends to put in the word bab. Well, that was like the start of it. Yeah. And I just thought it was really fun. And it was just like a really... Obviously, loads of people were using the word bab before. Bab, bab is bab. Yeah, it's, it's and loads of people use bab in clothing word, yeah. and stuff as well. But nobody used it with the word yes. Yeah. Where like did this come from, the yes bab? It was like a positivity sort of funny thing. Like Dave always says to me, like, I'll say like, you know, do you want to brew or something? He's like, yes bab. Like, and then, so it's just like a regular affirmation, like you hear it on the bus or whatever, like you know, just, but it's also, it's a really positive thing. Yeah. And like, and people got that. So I remember one of the prototypes, I wore it to Digworth Dining Club. Me and Dave just sat in, in Digworth. And like, like four or five different people went, a fucking Louis t-shirt, loving Louis t-shirt. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm on something actually. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. like people get it too. The, the way I feel about it, like the, that, 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 the smile on your face, people get that, like. But they get that vibe too, that like that the funness of it. Well, I wore your Tories Live one to um, the jazz festival. Did you? And I could not walk anywhere without getting stopped. <laughs> like just to go to the bar, I'd get stopped about four or five times. People going, I love that top. I love that top. That's so I cool. That um, Sai meeting my vegetite said his girlfriend Claire wore it to some. It might have been jazz festival. It might have been liquor festival. And then he said, yeah, in the end, she just had to put a jumper back yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. It got really fucking I don't, I don't really wear it out <laughs> that much because I get stuck that much. Yeah, like a little, a little. And the more they like, the more people stop. <laughs> <laughs> so it's yeah, really you, popular now. Have you had a better time t-shirt than that? I mean, that was just before, like, it was only half lying back then when you made I that know, t-shirt. I know, they were already yeah. now. Well, <laughs> do you know what? The tipping point was fucking, the tipping point was the food bank shit. And I was just, I mean, God, I, and it literally is just the tipping point. So the amount of horrible, I think they're just so... It's immoral. It's unkind. It's like it's it's shocking to me. Do you know what I mean? And so that was similar. I was like, oh, fuck it. And actually, I th- I think because I spoke to like I always I always speak to Dave about all my stuff because we live together and I work at home and he's got no choice. <laughs> 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 so like everything I sort of like you need somebody to chat about stuff too. 
And he's like, I don't know, so, you know, you're, you're going to fucking piss a lot of people off. And I was like, yeah, I know. So I already had that in the wings. I'd had that in the wings for about six months. And I was aware also, and it's true, that by doing that, I'd also cut off some other opportunities where people who can't be affiliated with that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I'd kind of held, like, I sort of like ummed and ahed about it. And then I'm like, and I was like, oh, fuck it. Just fucking fuck it. I'd rather do it and sort of stand up for that and make it really apparent, really, what I stand for and say goodbye to some of those things and some of those people maybe who, who don't think that um and you know we'll fucking raise like four grand for trust the trust do you know what I mean yeah. i've never before i can never donate four thousand pounds to trust the trust to, to any charity that's it's a lot of money do you know what I mean yeah. and i've never had that opportunity to do it and i wouldn't have had that opportunity without making something that people want to get behind yeah it's one of my favourite t-shirts. It's, good. it's, it's a fucking good. good t-shirt. And it's accurate. I don't know how you could get in trouble for something or like people get annoyed at you. It's fucking factual. It's absolutely <laughs> factual, but it's usually the sort of the what about is. The annoying thing of the what about is who are like, oh, they all lie. And it's like, they do. I, d- I do understand that. And that's also true. Yeah. They, but they, the but Tories are in power right now and their lies are really fucking dangerous. Yeah, yeah. They're like, way worse than and anyone else. Do you know what I mean? So and and that's, it's like that sort of, that like what about us about all sorts of, it's just fucking annoying. So it's like, you can't ever make a decision. So you try and do something and someone says, ah, oh, so you did that. Well done. But what about that? Are you like, I can't fix the fucking world. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I just do my little bit and, you know, be proud of your own choices. Do that. You, you can't, yeah, I have an issue with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then it's just brands that don't want to be associated, associated with um, someone saying they think Tories are shit. For the record, I think Tories are really shit. Oh, you're we a, all agree. Welcome, crowd. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> welcome, crowd. <laughs> did you cut out that stuff on the Pips podcast, what we said about Tories, or did you keep it in? I probably kept it in. Oh, right. I don't care, to be honest. And I think, do you know, if you're going to call your brand punks and chances, then... Yeah. It's got to be a bit that's got to be like, to fuck you, punk, like, you, you know, yeah, fuck it. let's be punk about it. <laughs> it's also part of finding your tribe, and your tribe is the kind of people who would say, no, nah, fuck the Tories. Absolutely, like. absolutely. Like, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm only really in it to find my tribe, really. Do you know what I mean? I'm in it for the fun times. And um, what P's and C's has brought about, which basically my other business didn't, which was working with really high-end... In- I don't hang out with really high-end interior designers. That's, mm. I, I don't want to go to the pub with them. That's not who I'm... <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas P's and C's, I fucking love my customers. I have loads of people who come hang out at markets. They'll come and buy something, but then we'll just shoot the breeze and have a beer. And that's lovely. That's was, just the best. <laughs> was that one of your core, like, core principles when you, be, when you started or you thought... Right, I've just got to keep as true to myself as possible. Hundred percent. So, like, whenever I make a decision, whenever I do anything, product-wise, I'm a fucking shit. I'm a real stickler for detail, and I'm actually, I'm kind of it's it's really best that I work alone in that respect because like I can be really picky about stuff, and it, it doesn't matter to say it's on me. Like mm. I'll pick and pick and pick and pick until I get it just the way I like it. And like actually, I've done a couple of um like samples and second sales. And invariably, I just get the same thing. What's wrong with it? I'm like, okay, so if you look on the T, there is a, there's a small speck there. And uh, th- can you see the discoloration? They're like, no. I was like, yeah, if you look a little bit harder, there is that. No, you just need to look at the top right. Yeah. That's right. That Yeah, there. And they're just like, you're fucking mad. And I'm like, I'm fine with that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Nothing leaves unless it's perfect. Fuck, I've forgotten the question. So basically just being authentic. So everything you do is, oh, yeah. is so 100% is you. Product-wise, it's like everything's got to be perfect to my eye um decision wise yeah do i believe in it is it fun and obviously there's an ethical side to your clothing as well yeah so yeah. like that i don't make that much of that really there's like there's bits of information on my website about it and the re- I, I just kind of deliberately don't make much but a because it comes across as really preachy and i've got fuck all interest in preaching anything mm. it's like you do what you need to do do you know what i mean but i think you're responsible for making your own decisions aren't you and so i try and make my decisions based on what I think the right thing to do is, do you know what I mean? I think mm. the world is full of stuff. <laughs> There's stuff fucking everywhere. Yeah. I try really hard not to buy stuff. <laughs> yeah. I buy stuff, do you know what I mean? But like, I try hard not to buy. When you're going to buy stuff, um, I try and I, and I, I don't say I think people, you, you can't tell, you can't say what you think people should do, but, and you can't say, because it also completely depends on your situation. Um, but if you're in the position to, 
And if you're interested in it, like I think it's really helpful to consider what you're purchasing and kind of the impact on that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Give it some so thought. So give it some thought. So I I make it so that I take that choice away from you. <laughs> you don't have an option <laughs> to buy something that is cheaper but less ethically considered because I don't sell it. So I don't make a big deal of it because most of people come to me and they just want the really nice soft T-shirt that says Yes Bob on it. And they don't really care if it's organic cotton or yeah. if it's been made in a fairwear factory or any of those things. But I just take that choice away from you. It's like... Do so you think that though? I think... I don't think... I don't really agree. I think... Like, I would assume that anything you sell is because it matches with your brand. You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe. I suppose I'm thinking more, like, general for brands, just when you're buying stuff. Mm. So I think lots of people would buy my stuff and then also buy stuff in Primark or Zara yeah. or anything like that. Yeah, true. Um, and so, like, just, just for my thing, I think they do like it for that. But mm. if I'm honest, I think, I, think the reason, I think the reason they look for it is because they've bought into sort of me doing what I do and it's important to me in the brand but if the brand had started and it hadn't had that I don't think it would be as important to people yeah. do you know what I mean people I think it is now because people yeah. know about it people buy into you and your brand and it's uh, for people who don't know you could have just set up a print on demand yeah like oh my god upload I get, I get your logo offered it like at least three yeah, times a week people and asking me to do it like it's half the hassle yeah probably I don't know might, might be more money who knows it's not, it's, it's cheaper and um, yeah. and it's way less hassle. But, but going back to detail, yeah. who's going to wrap it in tissue and put my nice stickers on? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> no one's going to do that. <laughs> but also, you don't know where they're made. Uh, you don't know you the You can actually specify stuff like that. So, there is uh, yeah, some, yeah, to yeah, a degree. Most of them. I mean, you could, but you, well, my point is, you could have just picked the cheapest t shirt because yeah. you design. Yes, bad work. People liked it. You yeah. could have stuck it on the cheapest shirt. Absolutely. Shit, and it would have sold. Yeah. And it would have done great and you would have made loads of money. I'd just feel bad. But I yeah. think yeah. there's a lifespan to that as well. I think like people get it in and go, oh yeah, it was a nice t-shirt. It wasn't that well made. Um, I don't know if I'd buy anything else. Whereas people now buy into, they'll probably buy most things that you make. Like, yeah, yeah they came for like, the t-shirt, but now they've got the, the mug. Or, the mug, the yeah. hip plus, the hat. I mean, I've just wrote down a list of what I've got. I've got pint cup when I go to festivals. It's good though, that isn't it? I've got. You, that's a game changer because it keeps <laughs> the beer so cold. It's so true. It is. It <laughs> keeps it cold. Well, I drink it in the house because it just stays cold. Right? <laughs> I've got the green hat. I've got the hip flask, which I love. My hip flask. That's Although people stop walks. getting married now, which is really annoying. <laughs> Because yeah, hip flasks for me are so a wedding like thing. So just tech good, yeah. So just to you. clarify, people like in general haven't stopped getting, just all the people that Carl knows <laughs> yeah. are all married. Yeah, they're all married. I'm at that age We've now. Out of weddings. We're waiting for the divorce parties now. That's the next one. Funerals, is that unfashionable? One, one, two, you could four of the t-shirts. I mean, I would. <laughs> My daughter's got the t-shirt. She's got the main yes, bad one. My wife's got two t-shirts. Our house is literally in the wash. There's always something of yours knocking around in the wash. <laughs> so, so, so in our house, obviously I've got to trial everything. Um, but me and Dave now have an understanding. So I wear like a medium and Dave would rather have an XL. We just have to get a large. I have to wear it a bit bigger. He has to wear it a bit smaller <laughs> because we've got too many of everything. So we can have like, no, we can only have one. There's no space in the cupboard. <laughs> Don't you think a lot of particularly independent and small businesses could la learn a lot from your branding as in like oh god i feel like um sometimes you can just try and chase the money and just float around you but if you just wrote down your core beliefs and stick to your core beliefs oh god, definitely i don't know if they could learn that from me any small you, you've got to work out what you stand for mm. because all your decisions are driven by that really you've yeah. got to work you got you you get a decision on do you want you think and especially as you get a bit more well known or you've been going for a little bit longer and it's not just me I, I, I can't see I, I would think it'd be for everybody it's um, opportunities will come along and you've got to work out if they sit with your beliefs or they don't yeah. and that's got to drive it all like for longevity as well I mean you, you'll get sick of doing something if you don't believe in it I just feel like some people have restaurants or that they have a few pound and they think right I'm going to open a restaurant it's a good investment which is never a it's a shit reason to do anything. Reason. Money is always a really bad reason to do it's anything. It's a fucking terrible reason to do anything. Yeah. Because the thing is, obviously, 
and you do everybody needs some money like that's mm. a real fucking annoying inconvenience but it's true um and you have got to make some money from your business really because otherwise you can't really carry on doing it um but you can't let that be the main thing you're in a right fucking pickle if you let money drive you to do stuff yeah it's got to be the worst reason to do anything I see it, it is the worst reason. It's definitely the worst reason. But I heard someone saying, like, you know, profits to a business is like um, like food to the body. So you need food to survive. But food's not, well, it probably is the main purpose of life for me and Carl. But for most people, <laughs> food isn't your main purpose. Like, purpose. you know, food enables you to do everything else in life. Whereas, yeah. same with profits. So... Profits shouldn't be the be all and end all of your business. They should be the fuel that lets you achieve your goals and whatever it is that you really want to do with your business. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. No, I completely agree. I try not not to even look. So you know, like um, I, um, someone said, oh, so do you know, like on your, uh, you can look at the dashboard and you can um, you can separate it out into what the uplift is on the uh, last week. And I'm like, oh god, you're losing me. You're losing me. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but what you can really look at is what's what's really fascinating is the percentages and how that can drive your add-on products. Like, no, I've gone. I've gone. <laughs> like, I can't. No, no, you're dead to me. Uh, yeah, I can't. There's, I don't know. I think it's such a different way to operate a business as well. Like if you if you're going to get really into the nitty gritty of profit making, you certainly can't run a fucking business like I do. Where basically I'm a I work from my loft with my dog, <laughs> my children if they're sick. There's always shit going on downstairs. I work wacky fucking hours. So I work. I drop the kids off. I work from nine till three. I pick the kids up. So I've got like a solid six hours. I never eat lunch anymore. There's no fucking time. So, like, I get the kids at three, then I'll hang with the kids till seven, and then um, work maybe seven till midnight. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think you can be. Certainly not as a small business. You can't be driven by profits. You're going to be... It's just fucking mental. It's just flip-flopping all the time, isn't it? Oh, pizzas are good this week. Let's do pizzas. You're chasing you know, trends, essentially, yeah, isn't it? Like, you trends, cannot. Exactly, you cannot. Yeah. It's, a, it's a really fucking shit idea. I feel like, idea. you know, a lot of the really good... Um, Restaurants now are like, uh, you know, ex street food, you know, like Eat Vietnam and mm. uh, Baking uh-huh. Brick and all of uh, Meat Shack. Meat Shack. They, they've done it. They, like, they didn't start thinking, oh, we're just going to open this really cool restaurant. They just thought, I, want I, to I make really, really want to make food. the best <laughs> food. And then they went out and done it. How can we get into it? Digbeth Dining. Let's tr- let's have a go at that. And then eventually, the, oh, people love it. We're making the best thing. I mean, Andy Lone Slow is probably the best example. I love Andy Lone Slow. Yeah. They're so cute. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. I like, love his story. I love his the podcast he did and just his whole thing about how like he basically he's so fucking humble. And obviously mm. I haven't eaten his meat, but apparently it's amazing. Yeah, um, it's really good. But like um he I have eaten his vegan stuff, it's amazing too. Um but the way he just started, like barbecuing, he's he's humble about the fact that like he's like I don't he's like I don't you know, I've just did some barbecues with my mate, so I didn't know everything mm. about barbecue. And he's just like hunkered down and did loads of it and then learned and then went to Texas and he's you know when you meet him he's just he's just such a lovely fella like you can just imagine him saying to some king barbecue in Texas can I watch how you baste your meat this all sounds <laughs> <Yeah>. a bit <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> excuse not me not a euphemism I, I, I would say he's one of my favourites so just to see his journey because I remember trying him like when I first went to Dig with Dine years and years ago and it was it was fine but like today it's like we we went to one of his pop ups at Little Blackwood a couple of years before COVID. His food was unreal, like it's really, gorgeous. really good. We went really, to see him at Hotly really Social clever. and he fixed us this like uh, like taco ball and the and the salsas were just like mm, like just so piquant and so good. Like yeah, yeah. But there's another awesome. lesson as well. Like he could have just oh, I'd really like to do barbecue, but I'm not the best in the world at it, so I'm just gonna not bother yet. He, he didn't think like that. He just went for but it. But also, like, like, when yeah. he talks like that, I suspect he was already really brilliant. <laughs> and then, like, he's like, you know, and then I learned some more. You he know, was I still definitely wasn't better than average. Yeah. Did, did, like, I, I, yeah, I love thinking about the way he did that. Like, and he did it over years. Mm. Do you mean over fucking? And I've got so much admiration for that. So, like, one of our mates basically became a social worker. But like he took some different paths and stuff. Do you know what I mean? And so he's super clever. But he left his. He left with like. Maybe maybe it was no A levels, no GCSEs, but it was something he needed, and it meant for him to get to be a social worker. Um, even though he's like he's really like it, it lends itself to him so much, 
like the, the, the role really suits him, do you know what I mean? But obviously for, for jobs like that, you do, there's a certain thing you need to do. So we had to take his A-levels and the things he needed to do before we could take the degree he needed to do, before we could start applying to do his social work stuff. And that, just making decisions like that, that are like, fuck it, it's six years, <laughs> but I'm going to do it. <laughs> I've got so, admir- so much admiration for that because sticking at stuff like that, it's just really hard. Mm. It's just really, really difficult. We get quite a lot of chefs and chef owners, restaurant owners and pub owners who listen to the podcast. And I think advice from someone like yourself, like that. <laughs> I, don't think I know you're laughing. Wants advice but from me. I think that's great advice, though, about building your tribe, building your brand. You know, was, no, you mentioned Red, and, uh, Red or Dead. Was that were they any kind of uh, inspiration for you? Or? Oh, God, they were when I was 15, 16. Yeah. But the owners, like, have you heard the owners' stories um, and stuff? Sorry? Have you heard the story? Like, I've listened to quite a few podcasts with the... Um, with Wayne Thingy? Uh, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, um, very interesting, like, really good. Like, He's a really interesting guy, but yeah. he he was involved in the development of Longbridge, wasn't he? Yeah. Like, so recently? He, he does, um, now he does um, town development and stuff like that, uh, which is where I came across him. But most of it's because, basically, he... he called up the council and said like the way that you're planning towns and it's shit it's fucking shit i love that <laughs> yeah that so is such like a punk ethos <laughs> isn't it yeah. it's everything just like, he does the is idea, i love that where he just went he's that's not the way you go about things is it that, mm. like in like sort of inverted commas don't do it that way but it's like no do you do it that way because no one else is doing it that way so that's how you get noticed and then and then someone will fucking listen to you and then we bloody was instrumental in doing longbridge yeah, i don't know what longbridge what is like but I know he was doing... <laughs> it, looks, <laughs> it looks better than your average, like, it, you know, most ca- housing estates now, they're just a cardboard cutouts, aren't they? Like, and yeah. His is a bit of style to it, it looks good. But even, I think, even not just on, like, a... Hemingway. Um, I've got his name. I just remember it, it's Hemingway. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait, wait. wait it's like, it's like going around my head. <laughs> but, like, the way the services are set up, the school, like, having... Um, amenities there and stuff for people not just the cosmetic kind of look to a town but how cre- you live there creative rebels that's the uh, podcast i listen to him on uh, have you heard of creative rebels it sounds right up my street oh it's amazing like it's probably my favorite podcast they're um two graffiti artists um david's they're massive like they're huge down london but uh, they just basically set up a podcast to give advice to creative people looking that's to so find cool a way. oh my god i would definitely listen to that oh, it's there it's as I said, I listen to it. As soon as it comes out, I'm, oh no, I listen straight to it. Straight on it? Yeah, straight I on. I love that. Oh, we'll definitely listen to that. I'll send you the link after. Yes, please. So where do you like eating in Birmingham? Okay. So, <laughs> I live, eat Vietnam. Yeah. yeah it's the best. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is, this is, this is my food. It's so flavorful. I've never had a duff dish. Everything's delicious. Yeah. Like literally, for, there's like a competition going on on the table for what's the most delicious thing, and I order everything. So I go through the menu. It doesn't matter if there's four of us or two of us. I don't give a shit. <laughs> everything that's vegan gets ordered. Everything. And then like the, like the guy will come over and he'll be like, you need to take your order. And um, he's like, oh, did you see the special? And I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, no, <laughs> but also just yeah, put it on. Yeah. Um, cauliflower peanut butter wings. Collie for me, like ch- I think they do chicken too. Yeah, the same like the thing, ones, right? Yeah, they're one of my so favorite So good, the obscenely the good. Marmite ones. For a while they went off menu, and then they came back, and I was on that like a yeah, rapid dream places. Hike. There's a few things that aren't on the menu, but if you ask, oh really? <laughs> well, I'll know that now. But no, I completely agree. It's one of them places when people come to Birmingham. I'd say so that's good. where to go. I'll go fucking couch cocktails. Yeah, eat at Vietnam. Mm-hmm. You. Guaranteed. Could it be an attic first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're guaranteed a fantastic. Yeah, it, night. there's just no, there's no duff that nothing's duff at all. Everything's so good. Yeah, and it's just it's little, and I love that. Like I just love yeah, the toilet. Uh, you've got to go out into the alleyway and down the side, and, <laughs> and then into the little yeah. outside toilet. It's yeah. just proper man. Yeah, and actually, when I worked at attic, um, I did the Vigania market like maybe a week ago, two weeks ago. I lose track. But at this, I was so delighted. So Eat Vietnam were just uh, were doing their first takeout weekend menu. And I was like, fuck yeah, I'm a sturgy for Sunday. I'm going to get my lunch. And so I managed to get in 
like flipping it, get the kids to swimming, get back, get over to Sturchley, get my stall set up. Um, and I was like, I've done it. I've bloody done it. I don't have to open till one. And like, the, and also attic didn't open till one, so no one could even come in. So I was like, I'm totally safe. I've got half an hour. I'm going to run down. It's two minutes away. I'm so <laughs> on this. Obviously, I get there. Every man and his dog is in <laughs> Vietnam waiting for this food. And I look at the queue and I just think, fucking no chance. I can't, I've got half an hour, but I cannot be sure that I can get to the front of the queue. And I watch some person and I was like, no, they're not handing out. So you get to the front of the queue and then you went to the left, do you know what I mean? To wait. to wait for your food, to, you know, to be freshly cooked. So I can't fucking guarantee it. Absolutely gutted. But then I ran into Sham from Bonehead and he came through and he was like, I'll bring you a little something. <laughs> <laughs> and so like I got some food for Attic later and it was delicious, obviously. Um, yeah, so that was sweet. Yeah, so I love eating right now. I live for a special dinner. I don't go out for many of these and partly it's because... There are less places that do a really, a really, you know, sort of the blue, the budget, like the sort of thing you'd never cook at home type yeah, dinner. Yeah, yeah. There's less places that do that really well, I think, for vegan. Certainly less than meaty. Harbin Kitchen. They fix the best drinks. I, lo- I often pop in there just for a cocktail because you can just pop in and you haven't got a book. You haven't got a book. And most people don't know that. And I kind of don't want other people to know because I can always get in. <laughs> but like you can, I should say. You can always pop in there for a cocktail and you know, it's a really good drink. And the cocktails are fantastic. They're amazing. They're That's so the only place good. in Harbour where I'd get a drink mixed. So here, I love the plough for Blizzy Mary and I love the plough in general. Um, I love Paper Duck for beers. And again, I love the vibe. The guys who run it there are really lovely. Um... Junction is our, is our hyper local, so like I can get to the junction in a minute. Um, <laughs> so it used to be when we were doing up our house, I'd like arrange like to like if I had to meet a builder or something, but then I just I just because they're always fucking late, I'd never be there. I'd just go to the junction for pints, and I said call me, <laughs> and he call me, and then I'd just run there. Um, but oh yeah, Holborn Kitchen for kind of a special dinner is so lovely. Yeah, it's fantastic. Isn't it? Uh, yeah, really, really nice. And actually, I don't think they don't advertise having a vegan menu on their website. But if there are any of the vegans, and I suspect there's not many of us, so <laughs> be patient. Um, there's, um, they will always fix you up. You can just let them know, and they'll fix you a really fucking delicious. You know what? They're probably the best restaurant in Birmingham for catering to people's mm. dietary requirements. The dietary requirement sounds like a long way of saying what they want to eat. Basically. Yeah, I feel they're but just super patient. You can all have this. You don't have to have the same fucking taster menu. You can just. You can and the thing is, I've actually that. got complete respect for re- restaurants that are just like, we're not fucking doing that. That's not yeah. our vibe. And like, I get that from like I've run a business myself. It's like, will you do this? And I'm like, no. Like I, I love you, but I'm not going to fucking do it. <laughs> and so I totally get someone saying, I don't want to cook for you. I'm like, that's fine because yeah. you do your thing and my thing isn't your thing. But having said that, it is really really nice to have one local. They're so inclusive. They're just Everyone. lovely. That's the word I was after, inclusive. Inclusive, yeah, yeah. I think they were the first as well. Like, I feel like they were the first to do that. I don't think there's anyone still doing the mix where you can all have different taster menus of food. Though. Simpsons oh, really? have a vegan menu. Yeah. They do. They yeah. Yeah. I've not Simpsons been for their... Um, me and Dave, pre-kids, used to have an incredibly indulgent um, like Wednesday afternoon. And we'd go in at Simpsons. I don't know if they still do it now, but they always just say, oh, hello. And you're like, what do you want? And I'm like, always get a glass of champagne when you go in. And then they'd be like, and what's the occasion? And we'd be like, fuck all. <laughs> <laughs> this is pre-kids when you have like money and time. <laughs> I, I remember that. And we'd have like, it's a really indulgent afternoon just going for lunch at Simpsons because why the fuck not? Um, yeah, so those days, are not they're not happening quite so often. Um, but I've not been to try their like sort of recent incarnation of plant-based, plant-based menu, but I've heard it's very nice. So I should do, I should go, I need to go. And also I haven't been back to land for ages and their food always looks fucking great. It's criminal, we haven't been to land at all. I keep meaning to go. I've tried to book several times, but they keep getting like press and then it books out for months. Well, they're little, aren't they? So there's not that many tables to begin with. it's not a massive And they keep getting fucking awesome press, which is ace. I ran into Adrian actually in, um, uh, in Hedge. He's like, he was there supporting, which is just cute, isn't it? Because that's what I love about Birmingham. Everybody fucking supports everybody. Yeah. So he'd popped into the hedge to like support her and he won't him because obviously they used to be neighbours in um, Great Western. I, yeah, oh, fuck, I love Birmingham. I oh, know. <laughs> I really do. I just think, I think. So yeah, I can't believe I haven't tried. We, have, we need to try land. Like so many people. I need to go back to land. I've got, got a girlfriend who like really wants it. Like Dave's not as big on sort of fine dining-y things. It's just not his bag. 
Um, but I got a girl date. I need. I got lined up, and um, and actually, she's been really awesome. I owe her a favour. So Sophie, I'm coming for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like our date, a little secret. We haven't been to land like. I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Criminal. It's not really bad that we haven't been. Mm. Have but I have tried several times. To have you tried fair. to get him on the podcast? Not yet. <laughs> well, that could be a good one. That would be a good one. That would be a great one. We kind of feel like we have to eat there first. I think that's the only thing stopping me. Maybe that right. would get you a table, though. Maybe we say, <laughs> we need to like, interview, but like, can you just sneak us in on the Friday? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can you find us anywhere on there? We'll see in the kitchen. I'll see anywhere in the next two months. It's <laughs> where else? Anywhere else um, sticks okay, out in your so head? Um, so we're quite um, good in Birmingham for veggie and vegan food. Oh, God, yeah, we're great. You know, like, I'm not great, to be honest. Like, I, I booze a lot. Eating is, this is terrible, isn't it, for a food podcast? <laughs> Eating is almost always secondary. Just because, uh, I don't know, timing. And actually, no, I'm blaming Dave on this one. Dave has always been like eating, sheeting. He wants to get out and go for the fern. So, but, so where else will I like going? Um, Buena Ondo is always lovely for Mexican, like really casual at the Kingsway. They always pop up there, and I really like those, and those are lovely, lovely guys as well. Baja, amazing. Oh, that's one of our, that's one of my You live you know there, don't you? I eat a bar quite a lot. I get a rainbow to eat. Oh, I went oh, the other week for Sunday dinner. Oh, oh Sunday, my God, I still so I've never had the Sunday the dinner, Sunday and I need so to go good. in for Sunday dinner. It's really, really good. It always looks amazing. So I good. want in. But I just love Baja anyway. Like, it, it doesn't, like, it never crosses my mind that it's vegan. Really? Like, I don't think about it. I think, oh, we'll go to Baja. Where do you want to okay. go for Sunday dinner? Um, Almost like a Baja. style rather than a Or if we're going to a gig thing. in Birmingham, like, if it's in Digbeth, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. where should we go for dinner first? We'll go to the Rainbow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like it d- doesn't cross my mind. When, when we did the podcast with them, like I'd already eaten with them a few times. And that's exactly the vibe they want. They don't really want yeah, them yeah. to They're be thought of as pushing. a vegan. They don't even use the you word vegan even, no, ever. Really like that's not it. their vibe at all. Their food's just that good that it doesn't fucking matter. It is what good. It is. It's <laughs> really, really good. And they're so nice, though. Like. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're so babes, cool. aren't they? Yeah. They're so lush. They're some of the coolest people in Britain. They're so they're. smiley and like... Yeah, they're just all about the good vibes. The other place I live that's obviously pops up relatively recently, Chop Here. So they also will hook really me up with real. This. Oh, you've not been? No, oh my no. God, it's really good. So I went there and had a sneaky. Um, we've been working really, really hard. And you know when like, you can sort of squeeze an afternoon out somewhere? Like, you probably definitely shouldn't. But I was like, today's the day. And so we came <laughs> here, we set ourselves a challenge to get a pint before noon. We ran down here. No one will judge you at the plow of having a pint before noon because there's a medics drink here. <laughs> so as far as any... I mean, the bar staff know because they know us, but as far as anyone's concerned in the vicinity, you could be a medic. You could have just done a night shift <laughs> and it's 11 a.m. and you've worked... You know, this is your 8 p.m. No one will judge you. So we came here for a quick pint or two and that uh, it was very nice. <laughs> <laughs> the guy came over to take the bill and he's like, fucking hell. And I was, I know, <laughs> he's like, this lunch? And we're like, uh-huh. And it was like two steins and like some fries to share. <laughs> so it's about a hot bar snack, it's fine. And then we went up to Trapea and got a Negroni at like, I don't know, 1pm or something. But it was fucking delicious. And it's just lovely. And like, I liked Boohoo. I, I, I liked it when it was there. Like obviously a completely different vibe. But it's like a sort of... Um, it's just like a nice thing to have where you're knocking around. It was lovely, but Trapea is mm-mm. really good. Yeah, we really good. Told how good it is. It's, it's on the list. We I've got to spend the weekend in Harborn. Like we need to like spend the whole weekend in Harborn. Yeah, make it when That's my kitchen's done. You can pop in for a cocktail. <laughs> 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 Everything. The pre-drinks at mine for you. It's Trapea. What do you do? No, when you say you have, uh, do you just not eat then when you're drunk or? Because most no. people obviously go straight for the uh, the kebab. Like obviously, that's not an option. We, we, we usually just sort of chips sort of are an option, don't they? Chips, chips, yeah. Are well, it's chips like, are always. There's not a time of the day where I've gone. I want some <laughs> chips gone. I've gone. Nah, no, like right. this never happened. No. Breakfast. You can put chips on that, but yeah, I love chips. Yeah, yeah. Chips <laughs> on the breakfast. Yeah, chuck them on. That's fine. No <laughs> a hash brown is just chips. Yeah, it's just Do chips. You know what I mean? It's just chips. Is it what's cod scallops the only chip in Harbour? No, right. No, this is this so. is very controversial. So everyone, I don't know if I should say this, but everyone like fucking thinks the cod scallops bangs, and it is a nice chippy. I'm not saying it isn't. It but, is. But they do vegan stuff as well because don't they just cook yeah. everything in beef fat? No, you no. can get it in veggie oil too. Yeah. And they do like these sort of samosas, but they're like 
When I buy smoothies, I want a box of 24 from the sweet <laughs> centre. Yeah. And they're still warm and they're crispy. And that's Proper how... Proper fat. Uh-huh. Massive. Yeah. yeah. And they're full. And, you, and you're like, oh, we're going to get a hot one this time or not so hot. <laughs> <laughs> they're always good. <laughs> yeah, that. They're kind of little and sort of crispy. I don't know. They're not my bag. I'm sure they're with the people's bag, but they're not. And also, I don't think that's the thing, is it? I think when people, like, live it, I think it's probably the fish is really, really good. Um, I don't know. For me, <laughs> kings over the road. Now, that bangs for chips. <laughs> 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 so, like, that's just, like, your regular bog standard high street chippy. Mm. But for me, that's that's just, like, a fucking great chip. Yeah. Like, it's just a great chip. It's funny. It's just, like, at kings, so <laughs> when we used to, when we were, well, I say when we were kids, but, like, like you now, 10 years ago, Dave used to go out and get battered with his mate Roy. They'd go into town, have a real fun time, and then they'd come up and they'd get food at uh, King's before coming home. <laughs> it was like, they'd just say, like, can we have one of everything, please, mate? And he'd be like, one of, what do you want? And he's just like, <laughs> you know, like, in the counter, this is when we ate everything, yeah. uh, can we have one of all of it? And he's like but which thing and is it all of it <laughs> so one bat sausage one sausage one cod one fish cake one spring roll and you know a large chips and it, that, that was that's what they did and they'd come back and it was gross but also funny but then obviously we grew up a bit and then um i was here with dave and we went in just to get some chips one night and he said oh hiya mate i was like and he said you probably don't remember me, but I used to come and he's like, I remember you. <laughs> <laughs> and now I go in and I was like, hey, we're really friendly. Doing it. But it was always really polite and friendly still doing it, but it was obviously fucking weird and drunk. Um, yeah, so that's not just the only reason I love Kings. I just think Kings do a killer chip. Yeah. That's just that's how it is. It's about you can have the best fish, but it's fish what and chips chip shop. Like? Everything comes with the chips. The chips has got to be good. The chip, they're so hot as well. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel like they're always like super, super, super fresh. I, I'm, I'm a massive ad, advocate for King's Chippy. I love it. Here we go. It's an advert. You've heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> Do they sell your stuff behind be, the camera? No, I don't think that's going to be very popular at all. Everyone much prefers cod scallops, but I prefer Kings. Are, we haven't tried cod scallops. <laughs> Shocking. Look, we haven't tried no, anywhere in Harbour. And if you don't live near here, do you? <laughs> I've been the plough a few times and Harbour Kitchen because I love Harbour Kitchen. It's my vegan menu. It's quite small, but it's good. Like, they changed it up about a year or so ago. And they do these, like, cauliflower bite things with, and they've got, like, crispy bits on and sort of spicy bits on. And I always get it. So whenever I come here for lunch, I always get the cauliflower bite things and a green salad. Sounds really like sort of, um, it's not healthy at all. Yeah. The cauliflower bites are really deeply battered and covered in mayonnaise. <laughs> like you need the salad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that is, that's just, for like a vegan order for lunch, that is. Yeah, you need the salad to get it through your arteries. <laughs> yeah, just like to really pump it through. <laughs> yeah. You got to rub your arms like, come on. <laughs> it's like, you've got this. Don't you stop, the hands are blue. <laughs> also, I think the plaid is the best Bloody Mary in Birmingham. Yes, I've had that. It's really. I good. think it is honestly the best. I think too many people put too much shit. Don't mess with it. It's really, really good ingredients. Like, do you get the smoked one? Yes. Yes, me too. The smoked Bloody Mary. If I see anything that says smoked. Yeah, yeah, I want I'm it. Like, I, yeah, want I, in. I want in. I want in. I love that so, The smoked, the, yeah, the smoked Bloody Mary, it's it's the bomb. Mm. I fucking love it. it is, it's the best. What, is it smoked vodka or something? Is it that yes. smoked vodka that had an Albert Schloss? No, that was... Um, duck, duck fat. I <laughs> missed that vodka. night. The night I was like, putting oh, you supposed to be there. I was like, fucking COVID. Oh, man. I know, oh, right? It looks awesome as well. It looks so fun. Oh, nah, it was great. rubbish. It was boring. You didn't miss anything. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's not true. <laughs> no, it was Tell you what, it was good. We, I think this party gets brought up on every single podcast. We've well, it was ever legendary, done. wasn't it? It was meant to be ace. The, um, no, the, an even better party. The, the one we went. Oh. That was a fucking great party. I literally bumped into you about eight or nine times. That was. <laughs> Just doing circles. Yeah, yeah. It was a good party, wasn't it? That was crazy. It was so much fun. Then. Yeah, I feel like you bring it up just because I didn't go. Yeah, that is what bring it up to my neighbor. Uh, <laughs> it was my sister in law's wedding, like two days after, and it 
like yeah. I was warned, if you come back with COVID, like we will kill you. So. Oh fuck yeah! Yeah, yeah. you yeah. don't want to catch COVID. Yeah. yeah. What a party! It was a fucking great <laughs> party. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's just like we were circling with trays of Negronis, like, one of these, I yeah. do. <laughs> I don't think the tray walked past me without me grabbing something off I know. It. It, well, it was really fun. Yeah, and there's cool. the um, hip-hop karaoke in the hotel rooms. Were you up there? Yeah! I didn't do one, but I didn't do one. <laughs> no. But I watched Simon do his, and, yeah. like, a few of the people do theirs, and I was like, that is, I mean, I can't do that, but that is very cool. Yeah. I also watched Simon's Gulliver's was Dye. bang average, though. <laughs> <laughs> You told him that. Don't, don't inflate his ego. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. It's awful. <laughs> Where's top of your list to try? doesn't necessarily have to be in Birmingham. Where is top of my list? I don't know. Um, I really want to go back to London because it's been fucking ages. Mm. It's been like, I've not been for eight. I've not been since they've moved into their new place. And it looks really good. And like... I don't know if the new reviews are coming because there's more of an interest in plant-based eating and if because people are actually trying to take it a bit more fucking seriously that it can yeah. be not just some street food or sort of some chips and mayonnaise on it. Or as I suspect, maybe they've just got even better than the last time I came, the last time I went, do you know what I mean? And now it's just like even better. But I want to go, I want to go and find it. And also I think, I think the new, the, the, the new venue they've got, I just think the interiors of it look beautiful. It looks smart. It I looks passed really, it the other day. It looks so It looks smart. so beautiful. And then the other place where I've not been for evening, we've been loads of times in the day, um, can eat. I've never been for yeah. their evening menu. And they're so vegan friendly mm. because just the way they cook, it just lends itself that way sort of being adaptable. So they do this yeah. like wicked in the day. They do this wicked like green bean stew. And I owe it to Dom that um, he introduced me to this coconut feta, which I'd never had before. Coconut feta? So it's just, like, so it's just a feta cheese. Yeah. Most vegan cheese is dog shit. Um, yeah. But this, <laughs> that's just factual. Um, but this is, it do, it's not its not good hot, actually, because it kind of, it melts into coconut oil, really. But um, cold, like sort of a little bit crumbly. You know, like how you use feta like a seasoning? So just yeah. like that salty, umami, like, it does that so well. And he introduced me to that. So it had like a, in fact, they gave me a block, but they do like a sourdough with like this green bean stew. It's, it's probably called something better than stew. That's not a very <laughs> sexy word, is it? But it's like this green bean sort of slow cooked. Cassoulet. Really, something like that, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then it's got this crumbled feta on and it's just, it, it's so fucking good. It makes me cross about how many other brunch places you go. And as a vegan, they say, do you want some avocado on toast? And you're like, oh, fuck it, yeah, fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm here now with all my mates, and sure, I'll get avocado <laughs> yeah. on toast. And it's like, yeah, so what we'll do is we'll just, we'll take off the hollandaise, and we'll uh, we'll take off the egg, and um, and we'll just, just give you, give you some. <laughs> but then at that point, because that isn't their thing, they're just like, we won't even fucking season it. Yeah. And you're like, mm. okie dokie, I'll take it, but I'm not fucking coming back. <laughs> it's like it's quite shit. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's totally different. Like they, it's uh, so I want to go to Can Eat for dinner because, um, yeah, their daytime stuff is just fucking delicious. Yeah, we've, I've been on the daytime. We've been for pop ups there, haven't we? Mm. Never been I've for never dinner. I've never been just for their yeah. normal food. And I obviously the bar really house something like that's a death and that. 100% the bar house. I feel like, you know, Can Eat, you, sometimes with something that's been there so long, you're kind of like, Criminally, you kind of overlook it. I do, and also, do you know why I overlook it as well? Because I fucking eat Vietnam, yeah. and that Vietnam. isn't fair because it's there, and just because they're next door to each other, there's fucking three hundred other restaurants <laughs> over there, so I shouldn't do that. No, but yeah. I get stitched. I'm like, eat Vietnam, eat Vietnam, eat Vietnam, because I just I fucking love like Southeast Asian food. I'm like, mm. like me and Dave always used to travel around Southeast Asia before we had kids. Yeah, so it's Thailand and Vietnam and Malaysia, and that those flavors. Just fucking speak to me. Yeah. Salty, spicy, coconutty, sweet. Like all, all, all that is, it's my bag, like a lot. I've got to admit, Verbena draws me in quite a lot. Verbena. So, oh, you I want to get to Verbena. Verbena. But they don't have any vegan food. So, mm. I feel like if ever they did a, if they did a vegan menu, I'd be on it like a... Yeah, I mean, it's fantastic. Like, Verbena's fantastic. Is it not vegan? Is so it just a vegetarian option they have at the end? I keep looking at their it's menus yeah. and That's there's nothing. Shame, and so it's, it, it's not like... It, so I, 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 also that's fine did me it's not no one owes it you made your fucking choice yeah, no yeah, one owes yeah. it to you to make you your special menu but I do always look just in case they are <laughs> the menu is <laughs> tiny as well isn't it it's like free or free or free you know what I mean free stars yeah, free three, main, three yeah I love there. that as well because yeah. that's like 
the confidence in that I live. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's like I'm all any sort of large money is everyone's suspicious of a large money, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Unless yeah. it's like a Chinese dim sum thing. But like any like normal, you just need to go little. Just do your little things brilliantly. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, just exactly. do a few of them super good so everything you get is ace <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you get that curry menu for the door and you're looking and you go oh they do Chinese food oh they do Thai food it's Indian <laughs> oh, place wow. and you're like they do it oh, all. this is all going to be dog shit <laughs> like, I'm obsessed with the uh, chicken and waffles from Chances yeah, yeah, you're right that is another place so for me like that that's not something I'll eat beca- mm. because of like what it is but my kids were going to lose their fucking minds <laughs> they're going to lose their minds when I take them there because of the fish sauce and then they do yeah. it with like the cream, didn't they? Yeah. And my daughter. So my youngest daughter, uh, it, it's just, she just doesn't give a shit about meat. I present, like I, I cook meat and fish for my kids. Like if they request it, like I'll cook it and stuff. I probably not, probably not as much as maybe families, all the families who eat meat, but I do cook it yeah. for them. That's fine. But not lamb because it stinks. Um, <laughs> but, that's, just, that's just true um, but like salmon stuff like that um, Bertie just doesn't fucking care she's like give me a slab of cheese and some new potatoes I'm good Rose oh that does sound good <laughs> <laughs> yeah but like Rose is um, like a die hard carnivore like she'd sell possibly her own finger definitely to a mine <laughs> for a lamb chop she fucking loves it. She loves the meat. Yeah. Like she, so, um, I got her her own. She's fucking starving. She got. She like. She's got a physical. She's got a big appetite. So she's not old, but she's got a big appetite, and she's she, like, she's always fucking doing stuff. And I got her her own like adult burger here, and she lost her fucking mind. She was just like, <laughs> hold that, no, no, hold my calls. I'm busy, <laughs> and she'd got rid of it before I'd got down with cauliflower bites. Um, so. Why was I going with that? You were talking about oh, chances. Chances. Yeah. So I need to take her for the fried chicken because she'd fucking live it. She would and Butts can have like the waffles and fish sauce. And you know, I can get coffee. So that's <laughs> fine. I'm good, good with that. I do them uh, beignets as well. You send beignets. They're like them little pillows that are like donuts. That is what, sorry, lighter. that's one thing. Oh. So, so Bertie wants the beignets with the fridge dipping sauce. Rose needs the chicken waffles. But basically I need to get my ass down there because... The girls would live it. Actually, really funny story. So, like, um, I had a stall next to Cassie, who makes all the sweet meat stuff at Independent Birmingham. Mm. And we were hanging out, and I was actually trying to persuade her to stay with me drinking. And she was like, <laughs> You're bad news. And I don't meet many people who are more, <laughs> who are into something more bad than I am. And I do want to say, I'd not known the before. She's like, I do want to say, but I can't because I think she's not had a baby. Um, and I was hungry, and I bought some stuff from her stall and ate it. And it was really, really good. Um, then later in the day, I ate some more. And I was like, this fucking peanut brittle. Jesus Christ, man, it's good. <laughs> and she's like, uh-huh. I was like, I just don't know how you get to taste so good as a vegan peanut brittle. And she was just like, who the fuck said I was vegan? I was like, I'm in that. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know. There was no, at no point had anyone... <laughs> I just made an assumption from nowhere, and I'd, I'd so I say I'm vegan, but fucking hell, I'd eaten a lot of butter that day, and it was really good. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah butter is good to be fair. Butter is good. Butter does make things taste really amazing, yeah. like really, really good. It's but like she was just looking at me like, how the fuck could that be vegan? And I was like. I'd, obviously, I just sort of wished it. <laughs> I, just, I just wished Please that it be was. Vegan. And I'd eaten like loads of it because it was so good. <laughs> was there any cows you wanted to... I have something uh, you want to bring up that's coming up. Honestly, I've got nothing to plug or anything. Like, I've just sort of... Um, buy the Tories Lie t-shirt. There you go. That's a plug. Buy the, buy you can still buy them. Tories Lie back t-shirts. They fucking do. They're still they lying. Even if, you li- if you're listening to this podcast in a year's time, they're still 2023, they're you still nine to go and buy the yeah. t-shirt. Yeah. Boris Johnson will still be the prime minister. No, he probably oh, won't. Oh God! No, he will. He'll be. He won't, he, no, he, won't, he won't be what prime minister. He'll be emperor. Eats? Boris Johnson or something like this. This is my beef about the, the sort of um, party gate. It's like, did he have the party? It's obviously we all fucking knew he had the party. But then it's like, oh, out him, out him, oust him. I say, but it's like, well, what's the fucking prize? 
We yeah. just get yeah. like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You've won like, another Tory. Yeah, it's like, oh, what is it? Rishi Sunak, you know, he's fiscally. I was like, fuck you, Rishi Sunak, you billionaire. <laughs> yeah, don't fucking come to me with your 200 pound loan. <laughs> fuck off. Yeah, so buy that t-shirt. So buy the t-shirt, be as angry as I am. <laughs> the money goes to Trust or Trust, did you say? Five so, pound yeah. for every t-shirt goes to Trust or Trust. So we've done four grand so far. Yeah. And um, yeah. That's why I always bring the No Bab t-shirt. Yes. Oh yeah. That was fun. Yeah. So I that was I'd not long been going when I went and speak to Alex about that. Alex, good friend of the show. I can imagine that. I like saying this friend of the show. It'd be like survey. I, I love the yes bab, but it's a little bit too positive. Too positive. <laughs> that's, that's almost exactly how it went down. So I went in to meet him, and we had like a little chat, and I'd come up with these ideas, and um, he was just like, "Yeah, I just think." Um, yeah, they're a bit positive. <laughs> and so we talked about it. And, that, and uh, anyway, so we came up with No Bab and we did something really, really simple. And it really suited the thing because, because Alex and he's a contrary fucker. And he's like, um, he, I maybe a bit less, I feel like he's probably softened a bit recently, but he got a lot of kicks from sort of doing a bit of poking, didn't he? And actually he's a really generous kind person who does fucking loads for Sifa and barely fucking mentions it. Do you know what I mean? And he introduced me to Sifa. I, I, I wasn't familiar with him before. But yeah, we worked on that and that's been fucking brilliant. He introduced me to lots of people actually. When we first did that, like I didn't have as many people following what I was doing as I do now. And it was and it was really, really helpful, that was. Um, and it was lovely to work with him because he's he's a funny fish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we love him. Yeah. Highly fantastic. intelligent, like just very, very, very clever. Smart fella, yeah. Very clued up. Yeah. And like it doesn't take himself too seriously. No. Um yeah, and does and does a lot really for other people. Really. Yeah. really I don't think it I comes think across very, very how funny he is as well. I don't think it ever comes across, but he's very funny. He's very funny. He is really nice fella. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I completely agree. You're probably not happy about us calling him a nice fellow. No. <laughs> I mean, I mean, be like, don't more. fucking tell people that. <laughs> they'd be, be f- I remember, so I remember walking in, um, I think it was when I had the samples and I'd gone in to, to, meet, to meet him and sort of show him stuff and to finalise a few bits and bobs to do to me. And I walked in like, hi! It's like, oh, fucking hell. Your positivity is exhausting. <laughs> I was like, aha. Uh-huh. Anyway, let's get the T-shirts out. Because <laughs> we talked about also doing like a shoot with like the Yes Bob and the No Bob. Sort of representing us both, really. But it seemed a bit more simple at the time to just sort of, we were we were sort of selling this No Bob tea, raise money for Sippers, try and keep it like, focus which i think alex would um agree focus isn't really my thing like <laughs> ideas is my thing like i get very very excited and i have lots of ideas and um yeah then yeah sort of channeling those down when it's just me is easy because it happens over it doesn't matter to me if it happens over like two days or three weeks and i can have like loads of ideas in that time and I write all the stuff down. I do loads of drawings and all that. And it doesn't really inconvenience anyone because it's me. But I think as a collaborator, especially with someone like Alex, who's quite focused, can be a little bit exhausting because I'll have lots of ideas. And he's like, <laughs> I've got a fucking restaurant to it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but obviously to me, and then I get my very... Once I'm in the middle of a project, be it a collaboration or a solo project, I'm very fucking involved with it and very, very interested in the detail. And I cannot, afterwards I can see that that's kind of ridiculous for the people, but at the time I just can't see it and I've got no idea why everyone else doesn't want to talk about the detail a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about the size of the label. It's like, let's fucking not. <laughs> let's okay the shade of grey. <laughs> My questions, are we ready? Born ready. Okay, I'm probably not ready. Okay, uh, you better be. Okay, I'm trying. <laughs> What's your favourite movie? Fantastic Mr. Fox. The, yeah, that's a great That's film. the child's that film. That's so right. Good. Wes Anderson. No, it's Wes Anderson. Jarvis Cocker. Um, cameo. Cameo, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Jarvis Cocker as a cameo. Fucking amazing. Yeah. Just being brilliant. Being fucking... Do- I saw Jarvis Cocker <laughs> at Glastonbury Festival and I, I, I prevented myself chasing him, which is more <laughs> than I can say about when I saw Tom York and he ran away scared, but that's another story. 
Yeah, I saw Jonas Cocker, uh, uh, and he looks every bit as fabulous as you imagine. Six foot six, languid, thin, and just sort of like wafting through. Yeah. Um, and I love him. I actually love him. Do you like his new sort of club song, The Zero Carbon I song? Do, I just love... Yeah, I love how like, he's... That's uh, fantastic. I love like, that song. ...developed, do you know what I mean? And like, he feels entirely true to himself and relevant to modern. And yeah. I fucking love that. Yeah. And Any mood to pedo, which is always <laughs> good. And he did um, <laughs> Cunts Are Still Running the World. Yeah. Which is just a fucking great song. Yeah. Favourite band? Sleaford Mods. Yeah, they're good. I fucking live him. Um, really I've good. seen him a couple of times. Uh, I listen to him a lot. I just love them. I absolutely fucking love them. Spitting the lyrics. I love the fact he works in a clothes shop in Nottingham. In an era, actually, when I was at Leeds at uni, clothes shops ruled the town. If you worked in a clothes shop, a cool clothes shop, you were the boss. That's how that worked. Yeah. <laughs> that's how it works in Leeds. <laughs> and I just imagine that's how it worked in Nottingham when he managed like a fancy clothes shop. Um, and then it wasn't like that anymore. And then he got the band, of Andrew. And I just think he's fucking brilliant. I yeah. think he's like a little genius, really. Yeah. I'm and Andrew wore one of my t-shirts. And that's like one of my favorite things. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <what> ever happened. <laughs> What's your favorite spirit? Tequila. Do you have a separate brand, a specific brand that you like? No, so I've, I've gone into tequila relatively recently, I'd say like in the last sort of five years. And I like all of them. I dare say I'm not trying any of the <laughs> shit ones because since announcing that I like them, I get given them as present. Not not like brand giving, I mean like from friends, do you know what I mean? Like uh, friend, friends get, get me for Christmas and whatnot. And so I suspect all of the tears I'm tasting are quite delicious. Yeah. And I went out, we went to... Um, we, where were we? I think we were going to a wedding. But Skip, he was like a the Skip's like the he used to work at the Duke and he um now mm. works at Chance Counters and he's also in Wicked Band Modern Literature. And we were out for a beer and he said, Oh yeah, so did you know because we're talking about tequila, did you know tequila is um the only alcohol that's not a depressant? And I was like, I didn't know that. And we were hanging with like, Tom, we were all together, like Tom from Duke was there, and he's like, Fucking hell, Skip. I told you that. <laughs> if anyone's going to tell that, I'm bloody telling her. <laughs> well, I'm going to be telling me when I So I still say, I don't actually know if it's factually correct, but I'm so all over it because for ages I've thought, if ever, you know, you're sort of flagging on a night out, but it is not the kind of night, night out uh, where you can nip home. Yeah. It's a night out where you really need to see the distance through. You need to really, yeah, you, you need to knuckle down and, and get involved, right? A little shot of tequila. I see that's a little perky whip. If it's good tequila, then yeah, that's great. If it's bad tequila, then I used to love tequila, way. man. Like, I, like, I fucking yeah, love tequila. So I good. like good tequila, but bad tequila is very, very bad. It was just, anything was better than like another really sweet shots like uh, oh my shock god, so it's fucking sambuca. Sambuca is the one I can't fucking, fucking stand. Oh, I won't do it. The amount of time I've I've the bought the, a shot that's the, the only one I refuse to search. I am like, not fucking doing that. No, don't there's not many things that if someone bought it me. Out of politeness, I wouldn't uh, like take, but I can't take that. I cannot no. take some beaker. It just tastes like shit. It's gross. To be and, uh, yeah, Jaeger bomb, obviously, if my cousin Idiots. Michael. Oh god, my I don't cousin, think your cousin Michael's ever come up. He's got. I think he's got shares in uh, yeah. Jaeger Meister. It's like he's got a loyalty card. Like every he, he buys, it. he gets a pound he back. It. He I mean, so whenever you're out, he's like, "Guess what, boys? I got the Jaeger would, Meister." You, know, <laughs> you don't even get. You don't even get that much warning. You don't get no warning. He just, just turns up. And it, like, he'll come back with the drinks and no. then a tray will turn up. With it, a it could be just, not a, just one. Yeah, not no. just one fucking mm. each. Fucking two each. It wouldn't so matter if it was a quiet generous, afternoon or anything. And like. nobody appreciates generosity <laughs> more than me. I do. I live it like I feel like I'm very generous, and I feel when other people are very generous. I, it gives you such a warm feeling, yeah. and that's why I like being generous to me because it feels great. However, that generosity does not extend to Jaeger bombs or Jaegermeister. <laughs> like it's just gross. It's a hideous, hideous drink. Yeah, I mean, I drink them, but it's funny I now being yeah. sober, like, and just appreciating the look on everyone's face when he does oh, turn yeah. up. I don't them. think he's ever done <laughs> it. And everyone's going, like, "Yay, oh, Michael!" <laughs> <laughs> and the look on some people's face when they try to, they like look at me, go to hand at me, realize it's me, and then go, Oh, he can't help me. <laughs> he can't <laughs> help me. I've got to drink this. <laughs> it's like someone's just spat in your beer, isn't it? It's that hideous. So sort of look, you're like, Oh, fuck. He's very generous. 
He is very, very nice generous. Man. Very nice man. And he does and I listen. drink them, so I can't fucking knock it. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not going to drink them. Well, you're yeah. better than me then. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite big fast food chain? I don't think this is going to be a popular one. What? Papa John's. Papa John's. You can have that. Can I? Why not? They do the best vegan dirty pizza. I was going to say your options are limited. They've, no, they all, anyway. they all do it. No, but I mean, like, it. they're not all going to be great, the options mm-hmm. that they've got. No. <laughs> so I don't think I've had a McDonald's for like 15 years. So I know loads of people's, even like chefs, I've noticed their, their go to is McDonald's. Yeah, we get a lot of McDonald's. Right? Because that like sweet, fatty, carby, that, that like that famous combo, right? And they do do that for vegans, but like, I, I still ate meat and I didn't go to McDonald's. There's something about it that properly disgusts me. Mm. And that is not, that isn't really fair if you then say I'll eat a Pop John's. I know that. <laughs> I do understand that. But you know, some things are just sort of like a little block for you, a personal block. Yeah. And for me, uh, McDonald's, Burger King, they've got to go over there and over there being the bin. But like Pop John's, so what you want to get is, um, you want to get the, it's something called like, the sizzler or something. That's like the faux pepperoni. It's got a chili base. Good. And then you want to get, uh, I've got no problem with quantity. You want to get the vegan special one that's got the pepperoni and the vegetables on, but you want to switch the tomato base for the barbecue base. Right. Then you want to get the buffalo dip for your crisp. <laughs> <laughs> it's a regular order. <laughs> oh, they must know your orders. It's so complicated. Yeah, that, that's, that's my go-to dirty fast food it's really good i'm not gonna lie it's fucking great it's not like i would take that over like a poly pizza right poly pizza fucking amazing actually i didn't mention them before but i love them and it's not like no actually it's a lie sometimes i would it's just entirely different like i feel like that sort of dirty pizza and then someone like poly doing like an amazing like artisan sourdough blistered delicious thing. they're just fucking not they don't they shouldn't even be called the same thing yeah i've got to it's mean, not the same one of thing. my favorites is caspian i like i love dirt bag caspian <laughs> the amount of cheese on that shit and i've got a so very wrong. specific order with caspian have you tell is her it my my specific order tell me tell me tell me it's a mediterranean extra large pizza uh-huh. to split so that's the one with donna meat on wow i get added jalapenos on it Yes, a side of chips and a side of chicken strips, and that's and it's that's just your order that's every just time. Every time, yeah, and I respect there that. Seriously, isn't much that beats that as far as I'm concerned. I respect, and I'm aware your... that it's shit. <laughs> yeah, like, I know. I know when I buy it. I know uh-huh. when I'm eating it. I know uh-huh. when I see it the next day, and I How can much throw it through a fucking though? window if How I wanted much joy? to. It's just perfect. quite a lot of joy. It's perfect, uh-huh. yeah. and like, that's what I'm here for. And even my wife is like. I managed to convince her once that this is the greatest food on the planet. Because I was like, is there anything else when you're pissed that you'd want? No. She's like, no, that's what that's pretty much what I'd want. And I was like, uh-huh. well, that's what you want all the time. That's the best. Hot, the best food. dirty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I hear you. Have you had pizza? pizza? Say that again. Pizza. In the, oh, those yeah. Ones. Not for ages. Yeah. Not so for ages. So good. good. Yeah, They're probably my favorite good. pizza in, in all honesty. Do you know what? So you what, know what? In we... Birmingham places to go out for pizza, that's my favorite. Is it? Yeah. So so we, we go out a lot here just because it's, it. well, two things. There's nice places here, but also because we live here. It's just fucking easy, isn't it? Like, yeah. you can't help it. And then we go out to King's Heath a lot because we love Duke. And um, yeah. oh, then... <laughs> the, the Duke's great. Oh, fucking so good. So basically, if I ever had a bar, I always say this, if I ever had a bar, like, I'd have, that would be my bar. Yeah. Like, it's little... The vibe's amazing. The tunes are great. The kitchen, is a like, constantly legend. different. It's perfect. The kitchen's it's perfect amazing. Bar. I'm DJing, actually, with Tom. Tom's doing a thing with a night owl called the Duke Sessions, I think it's called. He messaged me and said, do you fancy doing an hour slot with me um, at the night owl on, like, the end of February? So do you want to do an hour? And I was like, you know I've never DJed, right? And he's like, fuck it, you'll be fine. <laughs> 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 so if you want to come and, like... For some good tunes, but also someone who has not a fucking clue what they're doing, so possibly a slightly panicked look in their eye. <laughs> and you know, buy a tequila and come down on the oh, it's 28th of February. I should double check that, but it's like uh, it'll be fun. 
It's yeah. I like I'm a tiny part. It's like it's it's the Duke taking over and doing like a DJ set, and he's like asking some other people to do a DJ set. I think Tap Vision's doing it too. Yeah, and that's um, at the night owl. At the night owl. That was so fucking. Cool, It'll be so it? fucking it's fun. Cool it's so fun. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, obviously I was like, yeah, even though I don't know what I'm doing, yes. <laughs> <laughs> favorite dish that you cook at home i make a brilliant margarita and hot spice nuts it's a really i've got some really nice glassware yeah i'll do it in like a coupe with sea salt i go with like a sort of uh one two two ratio and um the very fucking delicious um and then i do like roasted <laughs> nuts with rosemary and they're just very fucking good real foods nah <laughs> no we'll order in just snacks we'll order I'm all in about the snacks oh i'll make you snacks <laughs> i can't remember the last time i made real food for anybody in my house that wasn't my children um easily eight years ago i'd say yeah I, i'm hoping to get more into it because actually i used to fucking live cooking and if i get stressed out which i make it my business to try not to yeah. but sometimes life fucking deals you one right if i find myself like a bit um, the thing I find incredibly calming is lying on the sofa under a DV um, and watching old school cookery programs. So oh, I'm Floyd talking, or something like that. No, that I'm talking like a, a 2000s. So I'm going Rick Stein, I'm going Nigel Lawson, I'm going Jamie Oliver. Achievable, <laughs> gentle, yeah. fancy kitchens, nice lighting. And I find it very, very soothing. And I eat biscuits and <laughs> cups of tea and Nigel I watch Slater. it. That's like that, isn't it? Yeah. Huh? Nigel, Nigel Slater. Slater. Yes, yeah. that. So and nice I watch him pottery. He's like, you know, I've just got a small garden. And you know he's in North London. His house is two million quid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he's yeah. got these sort of like, these little herb gardens. Over. And I look at it and I just, I let it wash over me. I know it's not real and that's fine. Yeah. But I let it wash over me. And I think it kind of reminds me. Of a t I don't know. I think I used to watch them at a different time in my life or something when I had less responsibility. And I lie there and I, d I feel very soothed by it. But also, it just made me think oh, I should probably fucking cook more. Yeah. I am actually quite a good cook. I've got quite a good palate and I enjoy cooking. It's just been quite a long time and I probably feel a bit daunted by it. And also, when the opportunity arises, I just want to fucking go out. Yeah. I just want to go out. Do you know well, what especially mean? you live in Harbour where everything's good. Yeah. Like, I want to get a babysitter and go out and have a fun time. Like, you know. What's your favourite food destination in the world? We went on holiday to Sicily, like, quite a long time ago. And I know it's a long time ago. I can't say the year because I know. But it's pre-children. And my eldest is now fucking eight. I still think about the food in Italy. Yeah. I think about it now. That's ridiculous. It's like... <laughs> Eight years ago, minimum. I think about it all the time. We went, we flew into Trapani, which I think loads of people don't fly into there. Like, I don't think it, it's like, it's a, it's a town. It's a really beautiful old town, but it's also like a port town. Um, and you get cheap flights there. I don't think it's the most popular bit to fly into, basically. So it's, it's, but I'd recommend anyone to go and stay there who's into food because you can't get away from the good food. <laughs> like, the good food is fucking everywhere. <laughs> and it's like, just all of it was fucking so delicious and then we went to say Nagyu Turismo thing like a bit further inland and you just basically said in the morning like she's like do you want dinner tonight and you'd be like right so am I going to drive out for dinner or do I want dinner obviously because I'm a boozeaholic I'm like I want to fucking stay here thank you <laughs> um, so we'll have dinner and you she would make you this four course dinner and everyone was served like underneath the olive groves um and it was just beautiful. And it was definitely part of it was the environment and part of it was the fact of on holiday. But when we were in Trapani and we went out that first night and we got we flew in and we didn't go out for dinner until like 10 o'clock and we were a bit crabby because the fucking Ryanair flight was shit and all of that. And <laughs> That's just expecting. every Ryanair flight. Uh -huh. <laughs> and like, so we got there. We weren't like uh, somewhere in this sort of romantic dream. Do you know what I mean? We were pissed off and hungry. And we got there and I was just like, my God. Hold the calls. I'm fucking <laughs> out. I need to really knuckle down. Uh, it was, yeah, Sicily, I'd say, was incredible. Cool. Great show. Is that you? Well, that's my questions. Well done. Oh, well done. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so it, this has been as awesome as I hoped it would be. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks loads. No fun. Thank you.